And welcome everybody to the first episode of this new project on the Capital Stand with your friend David Valentin. Let's uh, get it out of the way. Uh, the elephant on the room. We'll, we're going to talk about what just happened last week for a second. For everybody that has a link to come on the show, um, I'm going to tell you on the show when you can log on so you can be on board. Everybody's more than welcome to comment as we go along. Uh, first, I want to say what this show is about. It's a vlog. It's not really a podcast. It's just going to be me talking to you. We're going to be discussing the things about uh, the club, how we see things. If you have subscribed to my channel before and you had seen my vlogs in the past, it's just basically myself giving my opinions. Just think about it as a, as a video tweet, basically. Um, first of all, uh, like I said, uh, any explanation about what has happened for the past week, I posted two videos, one explaining what happened, the other one what this show is going to be about. I think I have done uh, the explanations for it. Uh, I have apologized for it. And uh, I have to tell you, I'm no longer on Twitter. Uh, I have heard that uh, there's some accounts trying to impersonate me. That's not me. I have zero accounts on Twitter right now. I have found that I don't have the the maturity to deal with with trolls and with people who all they want to do is hurt people, attack people. Therefore, I'm I'm removing myself from a place where that used to be about talking about Orlando City, talk about sports, and interact with one another in a healthy way. To a place where now it's just you know how can I push this guy to the limit. And then call that entertainment. I, I found it so egregious when I saw people who who felt that what happened to me was funny. But I'm not going to dedicate this space to talk about that. I know that there's a lot of people that are logging on out of morbid curiosity. Uh, there's some people that are here waiting for me to do something dumb and stupid. And for those people, I want to save you the time and I want you to... I want to tell you that none of that is going to happen here. Um, I have removed myself from Twitter, so that's that. With that, also goes away the insider, the tips, all that stuff that came with somebody that that look for to entertain you and to inform you in ways that traditional media does not do. So that's what you lose with me, uh, a guy that was doing things out of his love for the club, uh, and, and I, you don't get that. So the people that uh, have developed into my enemies, the people that, that that love to consider themselves flawless and perfect, now they don't have they don't have a human piñata to attack. They don't have somebody to go after. And I wish them the best. What's gonna happen is they're gonna turn into against each other eventually, because nasty people. That's what they do. So with that said, that that part is over. Um, and again, this show is going to be 10 minutes long, 20 minutes long, 30 minutes long, depending on how many people log on, how many people want to, uh, want to contribute to the show. Why is it called on the capital stand? It's not a dig at anybody. It's not attacking anybody. It's not appropriation of a culture that I don't, I'm not part of. The capital stand is revered as a place where a person leads the fans, leads the supporters, dictates the agenda as far as chanting and supporting the club. And when you log on to a show and you put, you share screens with me or you comment, you are on the capital stand. That's, that's the purpose of that. This is a place for people to debate ideas. I think what we are missing on social media, uh, especially for sports, in particular Orlando City, is healthy debate healthy exchange of ideas, listening to uh, to the other side. In politics, in, 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 in society at large, we're creating these bubbles, these this environments where all we want to hear is pe like-minded people. And then we are surprised when election results or, uh, or, or game results or laws are, that are enacted don't go with what we, what we feel, what we think is right. Because again, we have surrounded ourselves with, with, with people that agree with us rather than listening to the other side and see what they think and, and, and feel what our friends and neighbors who have a different opinion may have. So that's what the show is going to be about. 
So you don't have to agree with me 100% to be on the show. So uh, I invite anybody to come on and, and, and talk. Uh, there's only one rule, no cursing or personal attacks, uh, and all, uh, including myself. <laughs> That's personal attacks to me. Um, if you are going to come on the show to, to troll me or to attack me, Verbally, um, I'm just not gonna allow that to happen. Um, uh, this past week, uh, several people called me, uh, texted me, uh, prayed for me, and and I, and and I and I thank all of you for that. Uh, I really needed that. It was a very uh, low point in my life. Um, I felt that I was victimized, and uh, I, and I know that the, the, the people that that they what they did they did it out of spite out of jealousy um because when i posted the video explaining that the show the previous show was going to end somebody took it upon themselves to go and post that you know nobody wants to see a grown man cry online and um and it was a female his, hispanic i did not took a screenshot or save the the, the message uh, the comment on youtube i should have um, but I don't want to go like, you know, tit for tat with this. So I'll let you know, you know who they are, that there's people that, that can just let go of things. They, they want to be right a thousand percent and, uh, they don't care what they do to other people. These are adults. That's the scary part of it. And, uh, some are parents. So you can imagine if they behave like this, they're teaching that to uh, kids. And the last thing I'm going to say about this because obviously this is about Orlando City. It's not about me as a person. Um, one of the things that uh, uh, was not made clear on the videos that I made is that I am about, which was brought up to many, by many friends, many of you, um, in, in the comments, on the videos, or, or over the phone, or via text, or, or messages, is that um, I, I, I fail to let the audience understand that I'm the byproduct of my faith and the byproduct of my upbringing and the culture that I come from. Where I come from, um, integrity, your word, and, and, and uh, my brother uh, quoted me uh, the movie uh, Scarface, where Al Pacino's character says, I only have two things, my word and my balls, and I don't break them for anybody. Um, it, we, you know, as a Hispanic man, we come from a culture where if you physic, you verbally attack somebody and put in question their integrity about the things that they talk about, um, that is a, that is very offensive, very offensive. And um, also in Judaism, we have this this concept called lashon hara, the evil tongue, where as you probably are aware of, uh, one of the Ten Commandments uh, or the Ten Words, like we'll call them in Hebrew, um, is is do not murder assassinating somebody's character is considered murder. So we, we take that as the ultimate insult. So for me, for people to go online and try to attack, assassinate my character, people, some people who have met me in person, who accuse me of editing the videos that I posted, showing word by word what I said, uh, to me it was, it was super offensive and super hurtful uh, that people thought this was funny and this was a joke and, uh, and all that. One of the things that I have to say is if two members of an organization have violated uh, rules, they have to be punished equally. You can't punish one and let the other be. And unfortunately, that's what has happened. I don't think that's justice, and I don't think that's good leadership. So I'm going to leave it to the members of that organization to decide if they are led by somebody worthy of the title. That's it. How can you participate with me? You can comment. Uh, on 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 our comment board, you can go uh, onto our um, Yahoo account, and for the benefit of those on uh, audio, it's Footy Fan seventy six F O O T I E F A N seventy six at yahoo.com. Uh, you can. Send me a request, and I will send you a link so you can be on the show. Uh, anybody that is receiving that link, when I uh, open the floor, you're gonna be uh, you're gonna be invited to be uh, discussing uh, the topic of your choice. Uh, for those that are familiar with what our friends at Orlando Lions then do with Twitter Spaces, it's basically the same concept. It's you know your opportunity to talk about anything that you want. Um, so with that said, my friends, 
Uh, oh, and also I can be found on Instagram at the underscore Florida underscore man seven six. And if you send me uh, a, um, a direct message, uh, it, it's just as good uh, in case, like I said, if you want to be uh, on the show. So quickly, I want to read some some other comments of the people that are alive. I want to thank the 13 people that are alive, more people than I expected. There was very little uh, um, advertising on this. Uh, so here we go. Uh, David Hunt, let's go. Thank you, my friend. David Felix, Phillips, uh, Daniel Phillips, I'm sorry. Here we go. By the way, I want to thank Daniel for the intro. Um, I know that. We just we just recently started talking and everything, and, and then I consider you a friend. Uh, just just to let you know, thank you very much for uh, for the phone call, and uh, thank you for the um, for the intro, and also uh, to Jared uh, Quackenbush who uh, provided the picture um, that you saw with me talking to the, the our friends of Orlando City Fan TV, uh, which by the way may not happen for a lot for a while, uh, so. Um, uh, so that which you see at, at the top of your screen if you're watching this on YouTube, and uh, it's also at uh, the end of the intro. So, thank you very much, David Hunt with another vamos. I met Salim, let's go. Thank you, man. Always, always being there. Uh, David Phillips well said, David, healthy debate. Jim, the another one. Thank you, Jim. Uh, my internet is lagging. Stupid Storm Vamos. Don't worry about it, my friend. The beauty of this is that you can watch it later uh, on audio or video. By the way, uh, we can be found on wherever you um, have, uh, you know, wherever you consume your, your uh, podcast in audio. I'm going to tell thank you for pushing forward and doing this. And thank you very much. Uh, I mean, a lot of people that send me messages, they said they would like to continue having content. Um, I made, it, I made the, the choice of being by myself simply because if uh, if I fell in disgrace, which I don't plan to my friends, I didn't want to take people with me. The two gentlemen that were sharing microphones with me on my last project, like I have said, they didn't deserve that. I know there has been some situations they had to deal with because of that. And for that, I'm eternally sorry. I have apologized to them privately and, and, and publicly. And... Uh, you know, I hope that we remain friends and, and then we can move forward uh, with this. And, uh, you know, uh, they're great podcasters. I think that if they decide to uh, move forward with a project of their own, they're going to be very successful. Uh, William Aguilar, I'm going to be on and off watching because I'm working, but it's nice to see you again for Mondays. Thank you, William. I do appreciate that. All right, my friends. So let's uh, immediately go to... Um, to the topic, Orlando City had a buy this past week. Where are we as a club? For those that are watching, there's the banner. Where are we as a club? Well, it's important to uh, mention that Orlando City uh, in 2000 was, in 2020, I'm sorry, in 2020, uh, was a, a, a club that have failed to live up to the expectations of those fans that follow the club in the USL era when Adrian Heath was the manager. We're going to speak about him, and we're going to speak about him in the in, in, in his role as uh, our founding manager and uh, as our manager that takes us into MLS and our foe this Saturday in St. Paul. Um, he, uh, Oscar Pareja comes to, in 2022 to, our, to Orlando, stabilizes the ship, uh, makes us a team with an identity and reestablishes uh, pride uh, for our fan base. And that year was a year of triumph. We finished fourth uh, on the uh, Eastern Conference. Mind you, yes, there was only 24 games. Uh, we made it to the final of MLS is back, a place where no one so was uh, get to. And uh, we went into the most insane um, game of football that I ever witnessed, one which has gone around the world, one which made uh, Rodrigo Schlegel a household name worldwide, definitely in Argentina, uh, a, a player that had been uh, an obscure academy product for Racing, uh, became an overnight sensation. 
Um, I, I, I watched the, the, the YouTube videos about morning show after morning show, football show after football show, talking about this young man's exploits. And unfortunately, uh, that game cost us too much to red cards um, for players that I felt were um, key. And then a missed penalty that quite possibly could have pushed us through. The fact that Columbus Crew won the championship that year leads me to believe that we would have had a chance to crown ourselves MLS champions. How awesome would have that have been? But it wasn't meant to be. The following two years, uh, we have finished lower and lower on the table. We have scored less and less goals. We have accumulated less and less points. And with Oscar Pareja, we're in, we're in terminal velocity at this point. We have achieved a point where we are we're in a decline. We're in a decline. We're not getting any better. Our club has changed, like everything in sports. Players come and go, uh, and uh, the manager has to adapt to to the new players. Every player brings in a set of skills and abilities, and not everybody's the same. When a club like ours loses players like Nani, who, in my opinion, um, and this is going to be controversial for many of you, I think uh, while Kaká did better in the world stage, Nani had more of an impact as a, as a captain and certainly as an Orlando City player based on that. Uh, Nani had um, uh, 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 more of an impact when it came to achieving things on the pitch. And when you have a player that was such brilliance and excellence like Nani, uh, Chris Mueller, who had an incredible game this past weekend, <laughs> excuse me, you have um, you have Daryl DK, an impressive, probably the best draft that we ever had coming out of uh out of um out of the super draft and i know kyler had more goals different system hard to compare both players um in 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 players like tesha kindele uh that benjamin shell that 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 will contribute goals at key important moments when you lose those type of players and you bring other players and, and, and we digress, we keep going down. To me, that's a problem. To me, that's a problem because what has remained the constant has been Oscar Pareja day in, day out for the last uh, three and a half seasons so far. Now, you are probably familiar with the fact that when the friends of OC Fan TV gave me the microphone at, at the end of the game against Nashville, and I said, it's time for Oscar Pareja to go. Listen. I'm not calling for people to be violent against Oscar Pareja, violent against the players. I'm just saying it's time to move in a different direction. The club doesn't owe Oscar Pareja anything. That, that's not their guy. That's not their guy. It's somebody that they inherited. And I have said many, many times, Oscar Pareja was what our old ownership could afford. We can definitely afford a better uh, manager. The league has moved on. The league has uh, develop in ways that perhaps Oscar Pareja's skill set um, cannot reach. And when people tell me, oh, well, Oscar is the best manager that we ever had, or Oscar is the um, uh, gives a trophy, you could argue that, well, there was a lot of times within the Open Cup run, which, by the way, was all at home, where we could have lost them. And I have explained that many, many, many times in, in all the projects, uh, on, on, on social media. Um, and you could also argue that other clubs in MLS who had successful managers, when when things don't go right, they, they have fired them. In fact... The manager that gave New York City its only MLS Cup was only there for a year. You don't see New York City fans crying about him. All right, let's, uh, we got a comment here. Um, 
let me go ahead and put this up, GMD. I think the sketch of Doom is the Columbus, Miami, Atlanta run in May. If we don't win two of those three matches, we're in trouble. P.S. OCB has been much entertaining than the first team. And uh, I, I did, uh, thank you, Jim. I did see the game. I saw the game. Uh, this uh, so, um, We're recording this on Monday, obviously. Uh, it was yesterday. And my apologies to those in audio. I had to take a drink. I'm by myself carrying a live show. And for the past 21 minutes, I've been talking. So my, ex my, my apologies. Um, so you're absolutely right. Um, the uh, OCB show a lot of grit. Uh, tell sign for me that some of my favorite players may not be in the equation uh, coming up next year is Moises Tablante and Wilfredo Rivera are not seeing minutes, uh, which I'm personally I'm sad because I think that they're, they're great players <coughs> that have something to contribute. Um, but uh, the the starting lineup that we're putting out has been one that scores goals, that is aggressive, that defensively um, is doing is doing the work, and uh, I was very impressed. Of course, uh, it was considered a derby because he was um, Miami two, Inter Miami two, uh, and those are the games that you have to win. I always say, my friends that you have to win the games that matter to your fan base. You have to win the games that matter to your fan base. If, uh, if you go on the road and you win games, um, that's great. But if you can't win them at home, then, then that's problematic because that, that's, that's where uh, people who live in your city, the support your club, come to see you. <coughs> and I apologize. I, I have a um, sinus infection. I was... In Maryland and Northern Virginia, and the polling count was through the roof. There, we just needed to rain. We just need it to rain, and he hasn't. So I apologize, William Aguilar. I think the issue here, compared to New York, is that a lot of people, aside from supporters, don't watch soccer like that. So they let their emotions get in the way when it comes to firing pareja. Daniel Phillips, I think Pareja means more to those fans as an icon than he does as a coach. Uh, they're just struggling to differentiate. Dif 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 Hopefully I'm saying that correctly. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. Um, and, and, and I agree with you guys uh, a thousand percent. Uh, I have said uh, many times that to a particular segment of our fan base, that has not been there since the very beginning, or that has not, um, that don't come from a culture of football, that their experience with football or soccer before Orlando City was orange slices and uh, Gatorade on a Saturday afternoon with their kids. To those people, the game is a social gathering, and I will explain. Is a place where they go and meet with their friends. They tailgate, they grill, they socialize. They had a great time, and that's fine. That's perfectly awesome. That's what different. That's what set us apart. Because I can't say the word differentiate. Um, that's what set us apart from. <coughs> Uh, other countries, when it comes to the game, the tailgating and the pageantry of the carnival atmosphere, if you will, that's perfectly okay. But to those people, the result of the game, since we don't have promotion and relegation, is inconsequential to them enjoying the game, enjoying the day. And that's what I've been saying for many, many times. But there's a segment of our fan base, especially on Twitter, that take that as a personal attack. And, and you see that since my demise, they're posting that, that that's their family. They will kill for their family, that they got bail money. They're going to assault me. That, um, that um, 
that they feel attacked when I make those comments, which, by the way, were never directed at individuals or personal persons in particular. But they are so narcissistic, they have to make it about themselves. Listen, I don't care if you have quirky pregame activities or you are the cornhole champion at the tailgating lot. I don't care about that. There's a segment of our fan base like yours truly, who, if the game is at 7.30, I'm pulling in at 6.45. I park my, my car. I walk to the stadium. I get a drink. I sit down. I watch the game, and I leave immediately. And 20, 30 minutes after the game is over, between my seat in section three and my couch, maybe 20 or 30 minutes go by. That's me. That's your friend, David. And like me, there's many people like that. And there's all the people that after the games, they, they sit down and, they, and they, 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 they stay three, four more hours at bars or, or hanging out. Whatever your pre and post game activities are, it's, it's your own business. It's your own activity. And I'm not here to judge you. I know there's a lot of people that have said, well, you know, if you don't do things or things or think like me, then get out of my club. Or you're a plastic fan, which I, I find that ludicrous because um, there's a thousand ways of cooking an egg. <laughs> At the end of the day, you're eating an egg. At the end of the day, you are enjoying the flavor of an egg. So... Again, I'm not passing judgment on anybody's idea of what fandom should be. Where I find offensive and objectionable is when people say, if you don't do things my way, then then there's something wrong with you. Uh, let's see here. More comments. Uh, David Hunt, definitely agree with that. Uh, another one from David. Uh, <laughs> LOL, Cornhole Champion. And last uh, Daniel, the orange slices and Gatorade Joe got me. Well, you know, I'm here to entertain, my friend. I'm here to entertain. So um, let me uh, go real quick since I can't believe that almost 30 minutes have gone by. And I want to talk about Adrian Heath, Inchi. A lot of people say when they, 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 they make excuses for Oscar Pare had to be fired, they say, well, David, he got us a championship. I want to be. I want him to be that guy coming out of that tunnel to an MLS final. And I understand them. I understand that very clearly because there was a time where I wanted Adrian to be that guy. Adrian, in the early days of the USL, for those that came to the fandom of Orlando City after he was gone, on Tuesdays, on 104.1, he had a show, the coach's show, out of uh, uh, Harry Buffalo, where he answered questions from the fans. Uh, fans went to the to the bar and uh, I met him personally. Adrian called the um, the the sporting shows, radio sporting shows in the morning. Adrian was a one man show promoting not only the club but the sport, and uh, he's a man with a thousand stories and uh, very likable, very, very, very likable. And and the, far, the, the fans adore him. Um, I fell in love with Orlando City because of his passion and his drive because he led from the front. When things didn't go, did not go wrong, well, he took the blame, and when things went right, he definitely um, praised the players. That's that's the beauty of who he was. Adrian um, gave us three um, regular season championships in USL and two um, league championships. The banners are in the stadium, 2011-2013, as you guys know. And he also was instrumental on picking the purple, the color purple, uh, as our uh, club color, and the sign in the in, in the design of the stadium. Our, just so you know, 
our stadium. <coughs> Excuse me. Soon I'm going to be uh, turning the microphone to our guest because my voice is betraying me. Uh, our stadium is um, is designed in the traditional English style post-World War II. And uh, for us who follow lower league football, uh, we get to see that type of design very prominently in uh, League One and League Two uh, clubs. So um, a couple of notes here. Um, in 2011-2014, since we're talking about um, managers that have given us trophies, 2011-2014, so the, this is the results with Adrian. 2011, uh, first place in the league, champion. 2012, first place in the league. We were out in semifinals. 2013, we finished second by a point. Uh, won the championship. 2014, we finished first, and we were out in the quarterfinals. The average attendance uh, in USL was five, uh, and this is chronologically from 2011 to 2014, 5,000, 6,000, 8,000, and 4,000. Obviously 4,000 because we were in a smaller venue uh, over there in Disney. His record uh, with uh, from 20, in 2015, I'm sorry, in 2011, 12, 13, and 14, respectively. Uh, 2011, 15 wins, six draws, three losses. Uh, in 12, 17 wins, six draws, one loss. In 13, 16 wins, six draws, four losses. In 2014, 19 wins, five draws, four losses. So you can see that in the USL era, losing was something that was super rare. This is a reason why for a lot of us in USL that were fans in the USL era, the 2015, 2016 seasons were so shocking because we were not used to losing. <coughs> Again, I apologize. Um, in MLS only, uh, his team, his Orlando City, scored 78 goals and received 85. Total, 274 goals scored and 169 received. Um, when Jason Christ took over in 2016 for, for Adrian, uh, his record was um, five wins, three draws, and 10 losses. <laughs> so we, we did not improve. We did not improve uh, on the Jason Christ, which was a knee jerk reaction, I believe, uh, at firing Adrian. Uh, bad decision, and and one that I think all fans can agree. Jason Christ set us up in uh, in in a bad, very bad place. That to, you know, uh, until recently, we we're still feeling the repercussions about it. Adrian went on to Minnesota in 2017, and he has been there since. Um, he has scored 274 goals and has received 305, and he has 141. Uh, I'm sorry, he has. Uh, I failed to do the math on the wins, but um, I can tell you that from 2017 to um, to 2022, he averages double digit wins. Um, the loss column uh, has fluctuated uh, with the years, but after missing the first three years, uh, missing the playoffs. Uh, he achieved the goal of making playoffs before uh, Orlando City. And if you're wondering how many goals uh, have we scored under Oscar Pareja, not counting the season, 134 goals and 126 received. And our record in the since 2020 uh, is 38 wins, 26 draws, and 27 losses. So, my friends, I just don't see a difference between these two gentlemen. I don't see improvement uh, for Orlando City uh, under Oscar Pareja other than we have made the playoffs. But in what condition? We have made playoffs by the skin of our teeth in 2022. In 20, uh, I'm sorry, in 2021, 2022, we were ushered out of the playoffs in the first uh, round of the playoffs. And we have called that success. I'm sorry, it isn't. If we can't compete for MLS Cup, 
yes, it's it's great. We made the playoffs, but we did not go and make noise in them. Uh, let me uh, read a couple of uh, comments here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, David uh, Hunt, he's not lying, though. I got totally my section. I was too passionate and belong in supporter section. Again, the Northern stand does not own uh, passion and does not own uh, support. It belongs throughout the stadium. I've said this many times. David Hunt, I don't have an issue with supporters. I just like to sit and digest the game. Talk about the game. You can't do, the, do that in supporter section, I guess. Uh, that's what David's saying. And I'm sorry, David, if I'm making assumptions there. Uh, Colin Garvey, I remember that, that six wins into nine losses stretch. That was brutal. And after the 2018 season, that's when I decided to become a uh, a uh, season ticket holder. <laughs> so I can tell you that it was for somebody that priced himself into making sound, <coughs> excuse me, sound financial decisions. That was something that was pretty stupid. For everybody that has a link to uh, come on the show and talk to me, um, you guys can go ahead and log on. You're going to go into the green room, and I'm going to bring you guys one by one to interact with me. Uh, not that it's a privilege or uh, that it's something special, but I, when I envisioned this project, I wanted to give the voice to the people. So if you have a link to uh, to the show, go ahead and log on. Uh, let me, if you guys allow me, let me go ahead and make sure that I'm not missing anybody. And I don't think I have. Uh, let me go and check on my Instagram. And if you're listening, I know this is fantastic. This is incredible. Um, this is incredible podcasting. So we have Daniel Phillips. Hey, welcome, my friend. Hey, David. How are you? No, oh, I'm I'm doing great. Um, Minnesota away. Um, it's a game that, in my opinion, is going to define um, Oscar Pareja's future. And before then, before I let you um, uh, talk, I would like to remind everybody that we are eighth on the table. Um, we didn't play last week, like I said. Uh, Minnesota did play, and, and unfortunately, they fell to uh, Chicago 2-1 on a game that Chris Miller had in an incredible performance. And our record between these two clubs, by the way, Adrian Heath has only played in Orlando once, and that was in 20, uh, 2018. Uh, the rest of the, our matches have been in Minnesota and St. Paul, I should say. And uh, they also uh, uh, in one game in the MLS is back. So our record against this club, and my phone just froze <laughs> <laughs> because that's how technology is. Our record is two wins for Minnesota, one draw, Orlando City, in, aside from MLS is back. Uh, has never defeated uh, Minnesota United. So, with that said, my friend, thank you for accepting the invitation. What do you have to say? What do you expect this Saturday as we go up to the frozen north? Oh, man. Well, thanks for having me on. Glad glad you're back. I'm glad it wasn't thank as you. long of a hiatus as, as you kind of were originally thinking. But, you know, Minnesota this year has – they've struggled to score – uh, that's pretty obvious. I think that they had one game where they scored twice. Um, mm -hmm. All the other games, they had one goal, and I think they had a, a shut. They were shut out once. But the other side of that is we've only scored five goals on the season. We're as a club, we're not even in the golden boot race. <laughs> there are individual players that are ahead of our entire club in scoring this year, so that makes me a little bit nervous. Um, obviously, it's going to be a low scoring affair. But I will say this, I think that if hopefully the front office and the coaching staff and the players have heard the frustration of the disruptions 
and they are actively moving towards that. If you look at the heat maps of the first few games versus the heat maps of like the Charlotte, the Philly, the Nashville game, we are getting into the box a little bit more, but we still lack um, we still lack an attacking ethos. It's it's really hard to tell how we as a club want to to play in the attack. It still seems like that they are – it's kind of beg, borrow, and steal in the final third. You know, do we want to go in the center? Do we want to go off to the right? Do we want to go off to the left? You know, last year there there was a little bit of that ethos. There was a little bit of this kind of let's let's jam it up the right channel, right, the right side, the right wing, uh-huh. and then we'll, we'll play through our fullbacks. Um, yes. But we're, we're not even seeing that. In fact, Mikey Holiday said something after – I want to say after the first or the second game, and he had made the comment that he really enjoyed when Robin would send those diagonal balls to him. Right. And I literally thought after he said that, I thought, oh, great, here we go. Like, here's an idea. Here's a plan. The guys like it. They're building chemistry. And I don't think Robin has sent a diagonal ball up the right wing, you know, since then. That being said, you know, Mikey's been out just a little bit, but against Nashville, we were having some luck on the left. But simultaneously, we can't seem to decide, is it Angulo out left? Mm-hmm. Is it is it Gonzalez out left? Um, you know, Gonzalez likes to drive to the touchline and then play and in, dribble into the box and kind Correct. of take on a defender. Whereas Angulo, he seems to – he doesn't drive all the way to the touchline. A lot of times – He'll drive deep. He'll cut back to the top of the box and move in. And so kind of I'm really hoping we begin to see the boys solidify an identity and attack. Um, And I'll be honest, Mm -hmm. I might get get booed here. Uh, Twitter might be upset with me after I say this, but I've been really agitated with Facundo Torres. Uh, I I know he's a young man. I know he just got his girlfriend pregnant. Um, I'm a dad of three, David, I know you're a father as well. So there's, Mm -hmm. there are lots of stresses and things like that, but he's not, he's no, he's nowhere near the form we saw him last year. No, I have to agree. I have to agree. And his body language is really poor. Um, he, he get you know, we know that he likes the ball at his feet, but if you don't get it at your feet, son, you need to move and you need to make things happen. Um, mm-hmm. the, boys, the boys really struggle with off-ball movement in the final third. And to me, that is something where your DPs, they have to lead. They have to show up. Uh, when Ojeda, you know, there's been a few times this year where Ojeda has sort of, he's been running to the right and they pass it to the left or he's been running to the left and they pass it to the right. You don't see as much agitated body language from him. Okay. So, you know, I've heard rumors that, you know, hate has got um, a little bit of a diva complex. Who knows? I don't know. I haven't seen it. But I wouldn't be surprised if you had a little bit of a power struggle, right? You got two young superstars. Right. And in, in they're in the same club. And so I think my final thought before I <laughs> stop talking. No, it's okay is I would really love at the very least to see the boys attack with speed. Very rarely this year have we seen, uh, you know, one-on-ones, mm-hmm. two-on-ones. When, when you've got Ojeda's breaking and Enrique's breaking, there it seems like nobody runs with them. Nobody sort yeah. of catches up. Um, I follow uh, Dortmund in the Bundesliga. I really like those guys. Granted, they play a different style of football in the Bundesliga, but it's kind of like when there's a progressive pass, everybody runs. Everybody mm-hmm. runs except for the center backs. Uh, and even sometimes you're, the holding midfielder, you know, is way too far up, upfield. But I'd rather lose, you know, two to three yeah. than, than lose two nil or one nil. It'd be nice to see the boys really go guns blazing. You know, uh-huh. Poppy, Poppy says – that he wants to be the protagonist. And I believe that he thinks he's doing it because he's controlling. They want to control the pace. They want to control the tempo. But what we as the fans hear is if we're going to be the protagonist, we want to be the hero. We want to force it. We want to score goals. We want to make things happen. But the truth is, is Poppy wants to, he wants control over the, the pace and the tempo of the game. And he's trying to do it by slowing the game down. 
as opposed to raising the tempo and making the other team respond to them. I'll tell you what, um, I, I saw... I saw a lot of MLS football this week since I had the flexibility of being on my couch. I've been sick with a sinus infection, if you haven't noticed. Um, and uh, so I was just, you know, uh, watching the games. And I was shocked. Danny, I was shocked to see Juan uh, <laughs> just make perfect crosses. <laughs> perfect crosses. I was like, where is this man coming from? Where is this man coming from? And, and also to see Gio Acchini, who here was a guy that they brought in for like the last two minutes of the game, uh, starting for St. Louis and being a prolific scorer. Yeah. So one of the things uh, about Facundo Torres, and obviously I'm not going to make any ifs or buts about it. Everybody knows that, that I have a friendship with his dad, you know. Um, I met him through the process of him being signed when – I was producing Tiro de Esquina podcast the, uh, at the time and remains the only uh, Spanish uh, podcast covering Orlando City. And, and uh, a big hug to my friends, Alec and Paola, who, who are managing the, who have inherited the, po the podcast and, and are working on it. Um, and and I, got to, I got to meet the dad. Uh, uh, Jorge is back in, uh, in Uruguay now uh, and uh, very active with uh with the club and still still working the guy is a middle class guy just like you and me that just happens to have um, a millionaire son and um as far as Faku, he has a lot of pressures for somebody that is 22. uh the expectations of a nation that see him in the national team and expect him to be in a better league the fact that he has chosen to uh to have a baby you know and uh, not, not only having a baby, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's pressure. It's also pressure uh, in a foreign country uh, while traveling, and uh, they having twenty five thousand people demanding that your salary compensates. Uh, you know the, 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 the what we're paying you to do that you do it do it well. And last, um, I just don't think. When you look at the um, at, at this player's highlight reels in other teams where they're scoring tons of goals and they come to Orlando and all of a sudden all that disappears. What's happening? I can tell you that players show that they're visibly upset and angry. They're bickering against each other on the pitch and that's not conductive to a healthy environment. That Orlando City Jago that we had in years past has disappeared because the people that drove that uh, dynamic, Junior Urso, big um, linchpin in that club is no longer there. And unfortunately, now you have that situation. Um, there's our old Puerto Rican proverb that says, two male crabs cannot share the same, the same uh, hole. And <laughs> if you have been uh, fishing for land crabs, like many Puerto Rican kids of my generation, uh, that's a fact. You know, they they fight. They, some somebody either somebody dies, or somebody gets out of the hole and leaves the other one alone. And I think that's what's happening here. Uh, the, I think to be a, a football player, you have to have a little bit of an ego, and also you have to have a little bit of a, a chip on your shoulder, and uh, definitely. Um, these players have that, and, and it's difficult to share. So, Danny, before uh, before we let you go, um, I have to ask the question. This Saturday, if Orlando City was to lose, what does that say about Oscar Perez's future? That's a great question. Um, so I'll, I'll let me preface this. It, it seems like the... Twitter sphere wants everybody to choose poppy in or poppy out. And I'll say this, I am a, uh, whoever is going to help us win and get the most out of our players. That's who I would like to lead our team. Uh, I'm, I'm sure your job and certainly in my job, mm -hmm. I'm judged and I'm evaluated based on my performance. Absolutely. And, I'm glad that you brought that up. 
Yeah, and I and don't get me wrong, I I I really I like Poppy a lot as an individual, as a character. He's a man of faith. You've shared that before. Um, I I think what he and I kind of commented this in the chat, but he represents lifting Orlando City uh, from the depths of despair to a club that is respectable. And for that, we can build him a statue. Absolutely. We can can celebrate him and we can remember him. But, But what I'm wrestling with is, you know, the Wilfs bought this team. They've got billions of dollars. They've invested in all these changes, yet our product and our results are the same. Those guys are are pretty intelligent, I would I would venture a guess. And, and Jared has even said so. I think Ricardo Moreira and Muzi have all said we want to play attacking soccer. We want to play beautiful soccer. And so the truth is, is I, I do believe personally, I, I agree with you. I think he is on the hot seat. Um, and that's okay. That's okay. We are allowed to evaluate people based on their performance. It doesn't mean we hate them or we dislike them or, or we wish them it will. So for me, if we go up to Minnesota and we lay another egg, another Nashville performance, yes, good attacking options, but we can't put it together. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit over that. Uh, We, we get the ball into attacking areas at an inconsistent rate. And because Mm -hmm. we get the ball into dangerous areas inconsistently, we have to be absolutely clinical with our fit with our finishing, which we're just not. Um, if you look around the league, I was yeah. watching I was watching Barcelona versus Girona today, and you've got Robert Lewandowski misses a sitter, right? Arguably the greatest mm-hmm. striker in all of soccer. And so if guys like Lewandowski, if guys like Holland, um, if these guys over in Europe playing UEFA Champions League, playing in the largest leagues. If they miss, that means our boys are going to miss as well. So if we want to be successful in the attack with goals, we need to create more chances. And we have consistently shown a pattern of behavior that we cannot create those chances. So if it was my money, right, yeah. if, if I was the Wilfs, um, I would probably be making a decision if we lay an egg in, in Minnesota that – you know, hey, we love you. We want to celebrate you. Let us like, you know, let us send you off. Mm-hmm. But but it's time to move on. And for me, um, I mentioned earlier that I followed Dortmund. They they sacked Marco Rosa uh, at the end of last year at what you could argue was a pretty successful season. And they brought in a guy um, who was kind of a, a local favorite. And he, it took him about half a season, but he turned it around and they went on a 10 game winning streak in 2023. They were unbeaten and they, they, they laid an egg against Chelsea in the champions league. But other than that, they'd still be fighting. And so for me, a managerial change is probably the quickest way to see attacking football and see results. You know, my, my final thought is this, I think Cleon said it. I know you're friends with the lion said mm-hmm. guys. I think Cleon said this a, a week or two ago, but he was joking and he said, we need to get Poppy an offensive coordinator, right? Like in like American football. <laughs> American football, yeah. Yes. I, if, if it was that easy, you know, take this brilliant defensive mind, let him drill the guys, let him write up a defensive plan and then find somebody who can get the most out of our attacking players. Uh-huh. But that's not how, that's not how football is played. That's not how soccer is played. And so to me, that means that I think whether we like it or not, this is Poppy's last year. And so if it, if it really is, there's no time like the present, unless somehow Minneapolis or up in Minnesota, we score, you know, two or three goals and we look dangerous. But the truth is, is even last year, the only time we scored three goals is the 4th of July blowout at home where we got smacked. Yes. That was, that was embarrassing. So for me, no, absolutely. Yeah, I think I think I'm I think I'm ready to say goodbye to Poppy and celebrate his legacy. No, awesome, uh, Danny. I want to thank you uh, for the contribution to to the show. Obviously, um, my friend, this is not a one time. You're more than welcome to come back as many times as you want. So I want to thank you for that, uh, and uh, we're gonna move on to the to the next person. Thank you very much, my friend. We'll, we'll be talking. We'll be talking uh, outside of uh, outside of the show. <laughs> so, all right, my brother. Good, good, good. 
All right. So uh, before we bring on uh, 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 David Hunt, who's been patiently waiting, I want to read some comments here. Um, and this is uh, good, guys. Let's go, bro. Thank you. Appreciate that, man. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Jim D, man, forget tactics. Papi still hasn't figured out starting 11 or which player will be on what position. We need consistency. Then we can begin to work on tactics. We have so far, we have so far to, we have so far to go. And, uh, uh, my friend, you know, it, uh, hard to disagree with you, uh, when it, when it comes to that. Good guys. What do you think of jo uh, Jovinko? I don't know. He has been linked with Orlando City of, uh, or MLS. I have to tell you that when he was in Toronto, the man was a goal scoring machine. And when it came to set pieces, uh, he was deadly. Something that in Orlando City, unfortunately, we haven't had in a long time. Uh, here, Jared Quackenbush, uh, just turning, tuning in. Excited to have OC content from the legendary David Valentin. Thank you very much. The legendary David Valentin is dead. I'm sorry to tell you that. I'm just David now. David Valentin. Uh, but thank you. Thank you, my friend, Jerry. And as you can see, your picture, uh, the one that you took, which, by the way, what, bro, I always thought that photography was like click and 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 take a picture because that's, you know, what everybody has in their, in their pocket. But I don't know what camera we use, but I love the color contrast. It's just, it's just a beautiful picture. Uh, not because I'm in it. I just had the, the color contrast, the background. My friend, you are talented. That's what I want to say. Uh, here, uh, Colin Garvey, I'm curious if the new player format changes have allowed Pareja more rope. And I'm allowed to tell you that, Colin. On only need seventh or a win in walk around uh, to get a home playoff game. And I, yes, I'm, I'm sorry, my friend. That's That's the truth. We can finish ninth and by the skin of our teeth, make it in. And we can be as pathetic as Miami in 2020 and say that we made the playoffs. We we told them they didn't. We told them that it did not count. And this year, we may finish ninth and do the same and eat, eat a big slice of humble pie. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. And by the way, if... Nashville had been in the East last year. We don't make playoffs. Miami does on goal differential. And last before David, David, I'm so sorry. Uh, 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 Jared Quackenbush, God, but not forgotten. I'm a professional photographer and I'm videographer. Thank you, my friend. <laughs> of course, my friend. It shows. And I'll be talking to you on uh, on the on Instagram because I, I I I'm super impressed. Super impressed. So the man of the hour that has been. Patiently waiting, David. Welcome to the show. Um, you know, you heard what uh, Danny was talking about uh, when it comes to the game this uh, Saturday. What are your expectations uh, when it comes to to Orlando City? Your fears. I don't know how long you've been a fan. If you still remember the inching years while he was here. But uh, I, I think it's going to be an uphill battle. Inchi likes the 4-3-2-1. Four, four, He's deadly with that. We sure have been playing that formation as of late. It's going to be it's gonna be a matchup, I think, uh, of the past and the present. Who do you think is going to win that? My expectations are low, honestly. I think that uh, we have still the same problem that we've been having all season on attack. Um, it just doesn't seem like anybody can get it together. Oh, and I also want to apologize for the lighting. Um, Don't worry about it, my friend. My kid is inside having a thing, like a, an episode. So, uh, no, anybody that is a parent knows <laughs> what you guys don't know is that before I start a show, I tell everybody, you say a word. If you're not bleeding to death, <laughs> you do not say a word. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But no, no, yeah. I, I get it, my friend. I, I'm, uh, I appreciate that you are on. So I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Go ahead. No, you're okay. Um, You guys were talking about Facundo earlier, and I couldn't agree more. I've, I've said it all season. He doesn't look like the same player. Like, the finesse isn't there. It seems like his... What's like his eagerness to get involved isn't it isn't there. It um it shows like on the pitch when he's running, he gives up on plays. He 
you know, might take a playoff. It doesn't, he gets easily frustrated. That's something that he, that he didn't show us last season where, you know, he's getting frustrated on plays where maybe somebody made a mistake or whatever. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I don't know. I, I just, I think that a major part of our offense is Facundo and him not being involved the way that we need him to is certainly not helping our, you know, our offense. I think that there's other issues like, you know, who is the starting striker? Who, 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 because it, it seems like it changes every, every match. We have somebody else up top. Correct. Like, like the boys, the boys aren't getting enough time together to gel and to, you know, create that cohesion and chemistry that, you know, is needed to, you know, make a dent in good teams like Nashville's defense. No, I agree with you. And, and I, I want to remind people that Facundo Torres is here viewing Orlando as a stepping stone. This is not a destination for him. Correct. Um, he wants to go to Europe. And I can't fault him for that. In fact, I remember uh, telling uh, his dad over the phone when we went to, this, to the airport to receive his son that I did not see him in Orlando more than two seasons. And after last year's exploits, where he saved uh, our Open Cup campaign against Miami, and he had a golazo against uh, Sacramento, one that, as an Orlando City fan, brings me a lot of joy when I go and watch that video and I hear those microphones cracking. Mm -hmm. um, definitely, we need to uh, we need to be thankful, but. You know, he's a, he's a player, a young player with a lot of talent that has been linked to European clubs before. And um, right now, right now, uh, David, and maybe you agree with me, we don't we don't have a direction. We don't have a north. We, mm -hmm. we brought in all this incredible talent. And for some reason, it doesn't seem to be jamming, which is the word, the buzzword that has been thrown around uh, quite often because... And I, and I said this I said this on Twitter once that it looks like Oscar Pareja can drive a Corolla, but he can drive a Ferrari because now he has better players than he had before. And somehow we seem to be playing playing worse. Do you have you seen a decline or more of the same? It, I mean, we didn't really score that many goals last year either. I think the story of the, the season last year was, you know, we, we get up the early lead and then we just park the bus. And, I mean, I remember, I think it was against D.C. We, I mean, we gave up a late winner last season. Um, there was a couple, of, or, yeah, like a, a couple games last season where it's like, you know, we had, we had the majority of the game, you know, in our hands. And at the last second, at the last second, hold on, bro, yeah. Uh, at the last second, you know, last couple minutes of the game, we decided to just park the bus. And I think that was the story of last season. This season, uh, we haven't had a lead, really, so we haven't had to park the bus. And um, so, I don't know. It's just, it's it's all offense, honestly. Like, our, our offense just looks so bad that, like, it's, it's like everyone is lost out there. They don't know what to do. We can't get plays going. Like, there's no really good service in the box. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I don't, I don't know. I think that um, you were you were talking about Pereja earlier. If if this game is gonna make or break his tenure with us, and honestly, I don't think so. Okay. Um, I mean, I think that he should go. I, you know, there's obviously something that's not working, but I don't think that the ownership or whoever is in charge of those decisions is gonna make that decision. But at least before the end of the season. Okay. Okay. No. 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 That, uh, fantastic assessment. I have to ask you two questions before I let you go, as we are past the hour, and I think we have covered everything that we were gonna cover. And I gotta apologize. I, I my voice cannot go any further. Sorry about that. No, oh, it's okay. Um, I have to ask you, and I would have, I, I would have thought about this when when Danny was on. Do you think that we play entertaining? football or soccer do you think that when you see us win it's it's we're fun to watch and i and i gotta ask you this because i had the opportunity to see atlanta with 10 men get the lead in new york city which is a super difficult place to play in fact in this channel uh if you're watching us on youtube i have a video where i analyze uh how the 
field itself is a weapon um, that New York City has utilized to to basically be invincible at home. Uh, Atlanta looks very good. Uh, Miami lost this past weekend, but they gave a show. And this is the, the this is the point where we have to, as Orlando City fans, understand that that the teams around us they are they are not sitting on their hands. They're not sitting on their hands. So the, the, the first question is: Do you think that we play attractive football? No, I don't. Honestly, it uh, it's hard to watch, and um, you know the wins that we do pull out are gritty, and you know like sometimes I, I think that it, it it's fun to watch, but it's never like LAFC like watching LAFC play where that offense is just dynamite all the time. You know, like you know you know going to the stadium that you know there's you know ninety five percent chance that LAFC is gonna win, right? Yeah, so, like, like, like when I go to the stadium, I'm like, oh, I mean, 50 50, you know, like our, our, our home record was horrible last season. So, like, I never feel great coming to a game. I mean, like, we've have we had like entertaining wins, of course, but like for the most part, no, it's it's not sexy, it's not, it's it's just it feels very forced and gritty, honestly. No, absolutely. And the and, and the other one, the, the last question that I was going to ask you. Is because I feel that if the other team scores first, it's gonna be a tie because I just don't see us sc scoring multiple goals. And if the other team scores two goals, I feel that we're gonna lose because I just don't see us scoring three goals, let alone tying it. Mm -hmm. Do you feel the same way? Yeah, I do. I mean, look at look at the fans' reaction to the Nashville game, right? Like. As, it, I saw fans leaving in waves even before the second goal was scored. And by the time the second goal was scored, everybody was gone. You know, wow. no, nobody, I'm serious. Like, the, it was, I, I think I left, like, right at the whistle. Because, yeah, like, I, I never leave games early, but. Yeah, right. I have learned my lesson, my friend, about leaving uh, games early. Yeah. But it's just, the fan, I think the fans just haven't embraced the, like the diehard, you know, like like me and you, we're diehard. You know, like we, we pay thousands of dollars a year to be there and yep. support the, the team that we love. And, you know, it's just, it's not, the, the it's, I don't know. It, it feels like Orlando is like missing the culture that a lot of other teams have. Like the, like the crazy supporters, like, like, of course we have crazy supporters, but like, I'm going to, I'm going to get crap for this. I already know it. But like <laughs> the casual fan is, is not going to stay for the end of the game, right? The, right, the casual right. fan is is not going to embrace the culture like we do, right? So, like, so you saw everybody. I, I saw, I, I looked at the clock when I saw everybody leaving. It was like the 70th minute of the mm. national game. Oh, it, yeah. it, was, it was brutal. Like, everybody around me was gone. My entire section was practically empty by by the, what when did they score? Like the 82nd minute or something? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, like the, my my entire section was gone by that point. All my friends who are also season ticket holders that had left, and I don't know. No, I I I, my friend, I have to I have to agree with you. Uh, I it's uh, be honest with you, it's uh, it's a little troublesome that our fans are throwing in the towel that way, and uh, and, and and like I have said before, um, the people that care. I uh, care about the results, and uh, people people that, that are there for for the for the game, uh, they want to be entertained. You know, um, I find it troublesome when people say that this is not entertainment. This is life. I got news for you. Uh, I have a professional life. I have a spiritual life. I have a family life. Uh, Orlando City winning or losing does not affect any of that. Uh, it's not winning, really, you know, it's, I don't know. I mean, like I said, it's, it's hard for me to define or to discount people's opinions when, when they're like, oh, this is my life. This is my family. I'll kill for this. Um, we're not, we're not, we're not fun to watch. And, 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 uh, David, I, I, I watched a lot of football this past weekend. We're not fun to watch. <laughs> um, we, um, I have to tell you, um, I have more fun watching OCB than I, I I did watching us against Nashville. And mind you, Nashville went on to lose, and that's that's the thing. We we lost against clubs 
that go on after playing us and fail to score or lose. Mm -hmm. So what what did we fail to do that other teams failed uh, or managed to accomplish? That's that's a great question. Uh, David, I want to thank you for being on the show, my friend. It's open forum, so you're more you you're, you can come on the show as many times as you want. Yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, thank you for the support. Thank you for I gotta say publicly. Thank you for the phone uh, for 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 the text messages and and the support. Um, you know, if anything, I, I know I I'm building I'm building meaningful friendships. Absolutely. Uh, outside of social media, which is impersonal, and um, and let's be honest, it's, it's it's not the real world. <laughs> so, uh, David, I uh, I I, uh, I thank you for that, my friend. And like I said, if you want to come back, all you have to do is just ask. Thank you very much for being part of the show. And uh, any last words before you go? Uh, I hope that we can uh, pull out a nice win on Saturday. Oh yeah, yeah. I asked. I asked. The, did I ask you if uh, if we lose in uh, Minnesota, what that means for Oscar Pareja? Yeah, did I, ask I think that it, it doesn't mean anything. Uh, okay. I think that I think that they're just gonna ride with him till the end of the season. Okay, fantastic. Even that's not what I would say. The majority of the fans want. Awesome. Thank you, David. I appreciate it, my friend. Awesome. Thank you, man. All right, brother. All right, guys. So we are uh, finishing here at the end of the show. Again, first episode. Uh, aside from uh, saying on Instagram and on Facebook that this was going to take place, uh, I'm not doing a lot of advertising. The um, on the capo stand, it's not going to have its own Instagram. It's on, you know, it's not going to have none of that. Like I said, this is just a, it's going to be a very intimate space uh, for us to share. Um, so let me read this uh, this this comment here by our friend Willie Magler. I can tell you there's something going on with the team in the locker room. No one is excited to step on the pitch, and the only motivated player every match is Ivan Angulo, who is soon to leave too. Uh, William, unless you know something, I would love to uh, I would love to hear that. Um, Ivan El Rayo Angulo, this a player friends in a for a fan base where sweat, equity, and effort is gold and if you don't believe me ask anybody that has has seen players like benji michelle adrian venter in this town sweat equity is a thing uh he is the one that created the chance that facundo torres converted in the open cup he's the one that at times has kept our attack alive, and he's on loan. It will be a great disservice for this club to let him go. It's my personal opinion. And as a person, great individual, great locker room presence. As far as what's going on in the locker room, I'm going to tell you the truth. Um, you got a player like Facundo Torres that ex expects us to do better. If we don't do better, Europe is out of, out of reach, and then it proves to the haters <coughs> Excuse me, his detractors that he only came to MLS for the money and that uh, going to Europe is never going to happen. And quite honestly, I can tell you that the Tauruses are, are 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 people who who are very very focused and um, and, and and tune out the noise, but. Again, when you have a country telling you that you made a bad decision, that's going to get to you, especially when you're 22 years old, you know? And um, uh, that, that, uh, Daniel Phillips here adds uh, Kyle Smith. Yeah, Kyle Smith, a great example of that, that sweat equity. Um, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so... If we lose, uh, if we lose the uh, Ivan Angulo, is 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 gonna be a, a huge uh, loss for us. As far as me, personally, we gotta go to Minnesota. We gotta go win. I don't care who is the opponent. We gotta go win. It's gonna be very difficult. Inche has gotten the best out of us. Defeated us uh, the first time we went up to Minnesota, uh, which I felt it felt super sweet for him to uh, defeat the man that took his place. After all that he did for Orlando, mind you, uh, Inchi got fired on a Wednesday night. 
he found out through social media. Uh, for Amanda has done so much for our club. I felt that was super disrespectful. Um, a low point in our club. But you're talking to about a ownership that wouldn't even recognize, wouldn't even acknowledge that we had a USL pass. It's not until 2023 that our USL championship banners are lifted. That should tell you. And from what I hear, our away colors next year are going to um, are going to um, it's, it's going to pay homage to our USL and, 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 and personally, I cannot I cannot um, I cannot wait for that. Uh, last, uh, he came to Orlando where the club realized that they had to acknowledge it, and over the um, over the uh, speakers, they, they said, "Oh, we want to welcome Adrian Heath." Blah blah blah. Because again, he was a man that left a deep footprint in our club culture, in the stadium, in our uh, colors, in in all sorts of aspects, and he deserves that respect. He came to Orlando and defeated he defeated Jason Christ one more time. And we went to uh, Minnesota where uh, he managed to get a draw against a uh, former player and pupil of his uh, with uh, James O'Connor. So uh, the only time that we have been able to defeat him was in uh, Open Cup. Oh, I'm sorry, our Open Cup. But AMLS is back uh, at a time where Minnesota didn't have uh, a lot of talent. And <laughs> let's be honest, Nani had a night to remember. Uh, just too much quality, too much quality on the Portuguese. And uh, I think um, there's nothing that Adrian will want but to to win. So we are going uh, in a, against a team that um, that just lost the last game, has been on the road for the last two games, uh, is coming home, is gonna is is, is gonna play us really really tough. I think uh, Oscar and uh, Adrian uh, are very e evenly matched. So it's going to be something, uh, it's going to be a great match. Uh, I have to say that um, I personally think that uh, it's going to be a defining factor if we lose because then we're coming home to DC United and you know who? The boogeyman. I'm not even going to mention him. You know who it is. So, we'll see what happens. Well, I want to thank uh, everybody that, uh, the 13 people that have remained with us live, everybody that commented. Um, also, uh, to uh, our friends, uh, Daniel Phillips and David Hunt, who joined us. Again, I want to encourage everybody, please um, tell your friends that I'm here. And uh, I almost spilled my drink <laughs> for those watching. Uh, please tell your friends, um, people that enjoy my content, uh, that you think that they may enjoy my content, um, you know, and, and I would like for more participation uh, with me. Uh, this is why it's setting this space a, a diff apart from other shows is you get the opportunity to come and say your piece. So. With that, my friends, thank you very much. Again, I want to remind you that we are live on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. And on Twitch, we are on the capital stand, at on the capital stand, on YouTube. Uh, we are at David's Channel 76, and on Facebook, on the capital stand. So if you can, give me a subscription, a thumbs up. That helps me out. And I want to say goodbye to you, guys, the only way I know how. To remind you that in the game of football, the game of football is only for those that don't mind having their mouth smashed and their hearts broken. That's what football is all about. Thank you very much. May God bless you. And as always, vamos. Orlando.